This is your conversion tier list. Ram Pro Master, F tier, Trash, Diesel Sprinter Van, S tier, Super, Econoline RV, F tier, Trash, Gas Powered Transit, A tier, Nissan NV, D plus, Diesel Transit, B plus, Schoolie, D minus, Gas Powered Sprinter, B minus, Ford Econoline, C plus, diesel pusher, C minus. Now, I've worked on hundreds of vans, but nothing pisses me off quite as much as the Ram Promaster. Why does it deserve an F tier? Well, from a user perspective, you might think, hmm, this van's nice and comfy to drive. It's nice and wide inside, should be perfect for a conversion. That's true, but from a mechanics perspective, you're looking at a very cheaply built front wheel drive oversized minivan. This engine rarely lasts over 150,000 miles. What's worse is that the engine and transmission are crammed into such a tiny little tight space. A job that should take five minutes can take up to five hours. More on repairability later. Now, why on earth do I put the Sprinter in the Super tier? Why is it the only one there? Well, ultimately, these vans need a tier list of their own, given the engine options and configurations that exist even in the U.S. But for now, let me just start by giving you half a dozen reasons why these deserve to be in the super tier. Ultimately, the Sprinter van has the most internal space. They offer the absolute best driving experience. They get the best mileage. They're the most capable off-road. The engines last forever. And they're arguably the most easiest to fix. More on that later. Now, the gas Sprinter shares many of the same benefits with its older diesel brother, with the exception of reliability and good mileage. Now, they have introduced a newer gas Sprinter, which may redeem itself. However, the older gas-powered Sprinter, I'm not impressed, hence B tier. But if you are looking for a reliable gas-powered engine, go with the Ford Transit. They have a couple different engine gas engine options, which they've taken from the Ford F-150, and they've been running them in the F-150 for well over a decade now. So you think looking at reasonable reliability, reasonable gas mileage, really the only downside is I personally hate the way they drive. But here in the US, for a gas-powered engine in a van, this is the best you get. So how about the diesel Transit? Why is it ranked lower than the gas Transit? Well, ultimately, this is a beautiful diesel engine arguably almost as good as the Sprinter diesel engine. The only issues with these are the same modern emissions issues that plague the Sprinter vans in the newer years. The reason why the Transit diesel is ranked lower than the Sprinter diesel is because these same modern emissions issues are even tougher to track down and repair on the Transit than they are the Sprinter. Here's where we speed run through the last five. The Nissan NV D+, Plus. it drives reasonably well. You can stand up in the back. However, engine's more or less a piece of junk. The Ford Econoline, Chevy Savannah, a lot of different engine options. Most of them are reasonably reliable gas guzzlers. I don't care for them too much. They're fairly short, um, hard to find the aftermarket ones with the higher top. Most of the time you can't stand up in them. You don't really get great gas mileage. The only thing they have going for them is that they are usually quite cheap and plentiful. What you will spend making this vehicle nice and drivable, you could likely get a nicer vehicle for that amount. All right, now comparing that to the other Ford Econoline similar chassis, this one gets an absolute F and it's not the chassis fault. It's simply because the rear RV portion of it is built so incredibly poorly. If you ever deconstruct one of these, you'll see that the interior cupboards and whatnot are really what's holding the thing up. The walls you can likely punch through. They're made of the same styrofoam as you get in a cardboard box. The schoolie, D minus, um, they get decommissioned after around 12 or 15 years, usually a lot of city miles. A lot of them do have transmission issues. Some of them can be fairly solid. However, they're not the best. They're big, they're heavy, low gas mileage. I'm not a fan of converting these simply because you usually can't take them too many places after you stick out like a sore thumb in a converted school bus. So ultimately, likely the best to avoid. Not terrible from a reliability standpoint if you get the right drivetrain. Last but not least, the diesel pusher. 
The unique thing about this one is you can find them fairly cheap with still a reliable drivetrain. So if you find something with maybe a Cummins or a Duramax paired with an Allison transmission, something along those lines, you'll find reasonable reliability. If you do, if you are looking to go with the older 90s to early 2000s RV option, go for the diesel pusher. It will be the most reliable of the group. Ultimately, it shares the same issues with the school buses in that they're generally pretty large and they're not the best for traveling. They're the most comfortable to live in, but not necessarily the best for moving around. You can't fit in any parking spot in any place, so that's why the rating is relatively low. If you want to know more about which van to buy, click here. If you want to see your home screen flooded with Sprinter videos, 